Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in Mid Michigan in a zone 5B. It's a plant haul today, you guys. I've got some great plants to show you, some for sun, some for shade, and it's just gonna be so much fun. All right, let's start right off the bat. This one is one that a lot of people have. It's called Ladies Mantle, and I got three of these. This is actually a clearance find. They don't look like they're a clearance plant at all, but it's fantastic. They were originally $10.99, and I got them on sale for $4 each, so I got three of these. These are called El Camilla Sericata, and the name is Gold Strike. So these grow in zone three to eight, and they get 12 to 14 inches tall by 16 inches wide. So they're a nice low growing plant that's good for the front of the border. And they take full sun to shade. So these are gonna be great just about any place that they go. Very similar to the shape of the leaves of Hookera, but very green. And then they have these beautiful little limey green flowers and so these are going to be gorgeous i can't wait to add these to my landscape they are supposed to have evenly moist soil but i have seen them do fairly well in drier soils so we'll see how it goes but i couldn't pass up this deal i mean four dollars for these really great perennials that have been around for years and i know do well these also look super beautiful after a rain if you haven't grown these or you haven't seen them after it rains, they just look like these little dew drops that um, just beat up on top of the flowers and shine and shimmer, or on top of the leaves. Next up is a Brunnera. So what I do when I find a plant that I like is I like to try out the different varieties of it because if I find a plant that does well in my garden, very often there's multiple varieties of that type that will do well and so it gives me different varieties of plants to work with and a little bit different look or size or shape but i also know that it's probably going to do really well for me so this is brunnera macrophylla and this is a silver heart it's also called heartleaf elkinet so this one grows in zones three to eight and it grows 16 inches tall by 24 inches wide and again, this one says to keep the soil evenly moist, but my experience has been with Brunneras, they're pretty darn tough plants. Uh, if you have them in the shade, they really don't require much water at all. But if they're in the sun, you definitely need to keep them watered because otherwise they will wilt. And these do bloom in spring. They have beautiful little blue flowers above them, very similar to a forget-me-not. So I think they're definitely worth a try if you haven't had them before. And they bring that nice light silvery foliage in the shade that helps to reflect the light and just brightens it up a little bit. I also really love the heart shape of the leaves on these. And so I think it's going to be really fun to try out this variety. This will be my third variety. Right now I have the um, Queen of Hearts and the Jack of Diamonds. All right, next up is another shade loving plant. And this one is one I may actually already have. So I think you've seen the lungwort in my garden and I got it from a neighbor who worked at a nursery a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure that it's the Twinkle Toes variety. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm not sure. So I was really excited to see that this pot was full of Twinkle Toes lungwort because that way I can actually plant it and see if it's the same variety and know what the name of mine is for sure. Also if it's not that's all right it's a win-win situation because I love like I just said having different varieties of lungwort and what I like about this one is that the foliage is nice and dark but then on top of it it has lots of spots on it and those spots are very silvery and so they go really well with the Brunneras also and I like the lance shaped leaves on them. These also have a really pretty flower in the spring. It's also kind of a periwinkle blue. So these grow in zones three to nine and they get 14 inches tall and 18 inches wide. They require less than four hours of sun every day. And again, they bloom in the late spring. So I think that um, this is going to be a win-win-win no matter what 
and it's a very full pot. I probably can get more than one plant out of here, so that's always fun as well. And it actually looks like it's going to put on some, it has some little buds over here, so I might actually get some fall blooms before the season is completely over. Okay, this lungwort is not looking super fantastic, but this is a new one to me. It is very full pot though, so I think it's probably a bit root bound and I'm going to divide it up if I can. This one is called Spot On. This one is by Proven Winners. And this one is also hardy down to zone three. It goes all the way up to zone nine. And it has also those beautiful um, blooms in the springtime, but this one has a darker blue that um, also has kind of a reddish mulberry tone to it. So it kind of goes between colors. And this is good in part shade or shade and it gets 16 inches tall by 20 inches wide so it says on here that they come out as salmon to me the picture looks a little bit deeper color than that but it says they come out as salmon colored and then they turn to rich blue flowers um, the thing that i noticed about this one right away is that it reminds me a bit of the pretty and pink lungwort in that the foliage is not quite as deep and dark blue so it's a little bit more of that green color. Um, it will be interesting to see though as it ages or as it gets into the garden and is a little bit healthier if it does better and uh, greens up a little bit more. It does have kind of a little unhealthy yellowish tinge to it right now that I think will also go away. So I'll be cleaning this up and I'll probably divide this one as well, but super excited to try this one out. Next up is a clearance plant that I got. These were marked $7.98 and they are marked down to $4. And this was a Clifford Moore catch fly, which is a variegated catch fly plant. And I got four of them. So super great deal. They have these beautiful little pink flowers on them. And the Clifford Moore catch fly is hardy down to zone four and it grows 18 inches tall by 18 inches wide. Now I have one of these and it has these flowers in probably, I wanna say they came out in May for me, late May, and they're really pretty, but I think it looks better if it's on mass because it's a bit of a delicate flower and they have this airy appearance to them. So even though I have one, I wanted to add more to it so that I could get a really big impact with the flowers and the blooms. So these are gonna go, um, I already know where these are gonna go. It's gonna go in that area where I just moved some of those hookahs and hostas around. So just gonna clean these up a little bit, cut them back and get them in the ground. I'm so excited because these also provide a really nice brighten um, in terms of the chartreuse and the green, that variegated foliage, it just lights up the space and it goes really well with a lot of the other plants that I have like the hostas or uh, other plants that have that chartreuse color in them. All right, next up here we have butterfly bush and I lost a couple of butterfly bushes this year, just two. I lost one that was a pugster amethyst or a pugster purple and I lost one pugster pink. Um, they just didn't come back over the winter. It is a bit of a gamble when you plant them in my zone in the fall. So if you have any butterfly bushes that you have bought so far, definitely make sure to get them in ASAP so that uh, the roots can get established and they don't rot out during the winter. So this one is by Monrovia and this one is called Chrysalis Purple Budlia. And it goes down to zone six. So I'm definitely gonna be pushing the edge with this one. Oh wait, excuse me. This one goes down to zone 5A, 5A. So negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit, kind of hard. I'm trying to translate the uh, temperature into the zone. So negative uh, 25 should be zone 5A. And it blooms in spring and summer, so it sounds like it's supposed to bloom a little bit sooner than many of the other butterfly bushes, which uh, attracted me to it. And it needs six hours of direct sun. It grows 28 inches tall by 24 inches wide. And this has a really deep, dark, beautiful purple color on it. 
There are lots of little buds on it. It does need to be cleaned up a little bit, but I also have noticed that there's plenty of new growth down by the base, which means that it is a good, healthy plant. So I got two of these. I got these on clearance, um, $12.98. They were marked down to $7 a piece. So not a bad deal. Definitely going to get these in the ground probably within the next few days, just to make sure they have plenty of time to get themselves established before the fall hits and the winter comes because we do have quite a bit of snow here and it can get pretty wet. So I wanna make sure that they overwinter well. Look at these beauties. Aren't these gorgeous? I'm just gonna shake them because I think they're so pretty. I was thrilled when I saw these. So these are epimidiums and I got these at my local nursery. They were 25% off of 14 dollars and these have the prettiest little flowers on them. They're called the Lilac Fairy Epimidium. And epimidiums grow down to zone five, this one does, and it is really good in shade. And it is really good with handling even dense shade that can be dry shade. They only get to 10 inches tall, so this is the maximum height that they're going to get. They get about 14 inches wide, and they will have these beautiful little flowers. I almost think of them as a mini columbine flower, but they'll be like these little fairy-like flowers up above, and they're going to be lilac color. And I think that's gonna look so pretty in the shade in the spring. And these were actually grown in the Midwest, so they should do really well here. And um, I'm gonna be getting these into the ground. I, I wanna put both of them in my way back garden, but I'm also a little afraid that something's gonna dig them up. So I got two, I'm gonna put one back there and I'm gonna put one in just my regular back garden so that I can see how they do and make sure that one of them at least survives the winter. Um, but I really think they'll be fine no matter what when I plant them. I just think this is going to be a lovely addition. They also should be coloring up a little bit in the fall um, or no wait, when they grow out. Okay. When they grow out, they'll have coppery tinged foliage. So the foliage will actually have a little bit of a copper tinge on it. I couldn't remember whether it was when it was starting its new growth or when it was in the fall. So that will be really pretty also. I just love it. I'm so excited to try new plants. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this plant haul today. I certainly did. Uh, I can hear the neighbors in the background. We've had lots of trees cut down because the, the power companies came through and they want to make sure the lines are clear so we don't lose power. And uh, so lots of people with chainsaws recently making lots of noise. So I hope it's not too bad. Anyhow, I hope you guys are starting to find some deals in your area. It's definitely going to start getting cooler here soon again. Hopefully we're going to get some rain tomorrow, which is going to make it much nicer for planting. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Bye.